Hey, what's going on, chess lovers? This is Maurice Bishop Chess. Hey, y'all know my slogan. Life is a game of chess. Hey, guys, I have a beautiful and probably the craziest Black Lion game I have ever played in history, guys. Literally, guys, this game is crazy. And I played against, uh, I guess some guy, he called himself Bobby Fisher, uh, rated 2405. Uh, so... Without further ado, we actually going to get started on this game. Guys, this is crazy. Um, so he played E4, I played D6, uh, D4, and E5. For all y'all that don't know, I usually go E5 because, again, guys, uh, this is like my secret weapon opening for Black, you know, where I pretty much gambit the pawn. But um, he doesn't go for that. He just go Bishop D3. And um, instead of taking a pawn on D4, I just decided to go Knight B to D7 because, guys, I just want to play the Black Lion. So, c3, c6, knight f3, and then I go queen c7. Uh, he castles kingside, and I go a6. And guys, I go a6 because I want to prevent the knight from coming to g5 or the bishop from coming to g5. But also, guys, we already know when I go a6, I also want to go g5. All right? So, a3 is played. I play knight f6, you know, developing. Uh, a4, and I go bishop b7, doing another developing move. But also, guys, with bishop b7, I could go knight f8. And then once I go g5, I could go knight g6 and most likely hit the knight f4 square. Uh, he goes rook e1. But before I do all these on um, g5 and knight f8 moves, guys, uh, I went a5 to prevent any queenside uh, attack or queenside expansion uh, for white. So uh, that's what I usually go a5. And that's one of the principles. And Ginger GM actually talks about a5, which is why um, uh, I pretty much adopted that move. Uh, queen e2, g5, uh, knight d2, and then I go knight f8. Y'all already know, I'm trying to go knight g6. Uh, he takes a pawn, I takes the pawn, he goes knight f3, and I go knight g6. Um, bishop e3, uh, and I actually go uh, g4 in this move, guys, which is the, the best move, because after ace captures g4, I go bishop captures g4. And also, guys, I am threatening moves like knight h4, which is um, one of the black line attacks. Uh, knight b to d2. Uh, I go rook g8, guys, because again, I want to get the rook g file. You know, the rook is in front of the king. Uh, he goes rook d1, and I decide to castle queen side because again, guys, when I castle queen side, uh, I could probably most likely go rook g7 and then rook d to g8, which is on um, one of my plans. Uh, he actually moves out of that, you know, that g file where the rook is at. He goes king f1. So I go knight h4, um, he goes b4, and then uh, I go knight h5. Now, guys, I did have a little tactic uh, that I, I could have played. I could have played the move knight captures g2. Um, if he takes, I have bishop captures f3. Um, the thing is, guys, uh, you can't, obviously, he can't take with the queen because he's in check. So son has to get, and then if he moves his king out the way, he'll lose his queen. So if he decides to take, um with the the king then i had queen d7 and the crazy part guys uh i was pre i actually saw this move but i was like pre-moving like crazy um and i just did queen d7 uh so and i actually missed that move uh because even after rook g1 rook after g1 he takes and then queen h3 check um the whole purpose of it guys if he goes rook g3 i have a uh, queen uh h1 check uh, if he decides to go rook g2, now I have queen h5 check. And the whole purpose of this, guys, is we're really driving this king to the g5, which is where we want to go because the rook is on d8. We could come here. So this is another technique, guys, that you can actually um, look at when knight catches g2. Um, if, if I had, like, if we was playing, like, three-minute blitz, guys, I most likely I would have just saw, or actually, number one, I already saw the knight catch g2. Again, guys, this is bullet, so I had to pre-move, so I couldn't. You know, I was just pre-moving a lot. But, yeah, I would have saw the knight capture G2. Uh, and this is kind of like a, a typical um, attack, though. Uh, rook G8 check, and then after bishop G, uh, G5, I go rook capture G5, and then uh, this is pretty much um, over. Because, really, the only thing that he could block it with is with the queen. And then uh, I just go queen captures D4, and if he comes here, this is checkmate. So, th that's a typical um, black lion mate, mate attack. So uh, definitely uh, don't forget about that. All right. So in this game, guys, because I was pre-moving, uh, I, I went knight h5. 
Uh, B catches A5 and then Queen D7. Uh, again, guys, I still had the knight catcher G2 move, but uh, in which that's where I was going for the next move. But my opponent played knight C4. Now, look at this, guys. This is where everything goes down. Everything goes down, guys. And you're going to look at this move. You're going to be like, what the heck is going on? Guys, I go by this principle. If I have three or more pieces surrounding the king, I have a strong attack. Regardless of if I lose material, I have a very strong attack. I could still do something crazy. And guys, I did something very, 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 very crazy, guys. So the move that I played is I played Knight Catchers G2, guys. I played Knight Catchers G2. Now look at this. I already see this. And honestly, guys, everybody, they're going to see this move. This is not a hard move to find. Oh, I might as well get the queen and everything, right? So look at this. Knight B6, check. King C7. Knight catches D7, right? And then I do the move. Bishop H3, guys. Yes, I don't even take the knight, guys. I don't even take the knight. I go Bishop H3. Why Bishop H3? Because, guys, if he decides to go somewhere like Bishop C4, guys, uh, this is um, pretty much over. After knight F4, um, uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry, guys. This is checkmate. Oh, my bad. So this is the move that I saw. I saw knight f4 checkmate, uh, which is what I was threatening. Uh, so what my opponent played is he played bishop b6 check. So this looks like white is killing me. And if you see, uh, it's giving um, white, you know, a plus 1.2 because he has the advantage. Uh, I go king c8, right? Again, white cannot take this rook. He can't do anything else because, again, I'm threatening knight f4 checkmate. Literally, guys. Even if he try to move the queen anywhere else, guys, knight f4 is still checkmate. So, the only best move that he could do, the only move that white could do was go king g1, move right back into the g-file. I played knight captures um, e1 with a discover check. And then he plays king h1. And I play Bishop G2 check. He plays King H2. And uh, I actually play Bishop captures F3. Now, the engine move says Knight captures F3, which would have been um, a definitely um, a great move, uh, guys. Because uh, after Queen captures, I go Bishop captures um, D1. Um, if, you know, uh, Bishop captures um, D8. Uh... What comes after Bishop Cap? Yeah, after Bishop Capture D8, I believe it's uh Rook G2 check. Uh King H1. Now the thing is, this is another thing that I saw. I saw that if he goes King H1, uh Knight F4 is checkmate, guys. Uh, which is a nasty, nasty checkmate, guys. So this is another thing that I saw. Uh mating patterns and guys, because the bishop is on E7, it covers this square. So I was really hoping for uh King H3, because that would have been a really, really nasty mate. Uh, so that's stuff that I was um looking at, right? Um, uh, but e but even with that being said, guys, um, uh, with this uh move, uh, you know now um black actually uh has the advantage um in his um position because now guys I could go um bishop captures um d8 and of course guys I am actually winning um in his position, right? But in this case, guys, I still go bishop captures f3 again. This is bullet. Didn't have time to really um, calculate everything. You know, it's like instantaneous. But again, guys, I still have the ideas. I, I still see shots. I still see what I can do. Um, my opponent actually plays Rook Catchers E1 to get the Knight out the way because that was um, pretty much a threat. So uh, I played Bishop Catchers E2. Uh, he takes. I go Rook Catchers D7. Of course, guys, I am winning. Uh, before, it was White having the, the advantage, which was a small advantage. It wasn't even a big advantage. It was just a small advantage. Uh, but now I have the advantage now. Uh, Bishop c4, I play knight f4. Uh, he goes rook e1, and I immediately go to the uh, second rank, rook g2 check. He goes king h1. I go rook d2. Look at this guy. This is so beautiful. Uh, he actually takes the pawn on bishop catchers f7, and I play bishop f4. That's what I play. Bishop f4, guys, because I'm getting ready to hit the f2 pawn. Uh, he goes rook f1, you know, trying to defend, but it doesn't work because I still go bishop captures f2. Um, he goes bishop uh, h5. I go bishop captures on um, g3. And, of course, guys, I am threatening rook 
uh, h2 and rook d2 checkmate. Of course, um, he goes bishop g4 check first. I go b1, and then he goes bishop f3 because, again, guys, he only sees the threat rook h2, king g1, and then rook g2 checkmate. But of course, I wouldn't be able to go to g2 because the bishop is here. But the thing that he missed is because I still have this dark square bishop covering that square. So after bishop f3, guys, I just go rook h2 check mate guys check me which was a uh, beautiful and and i sacked the queen guys and that was a queen sack you know what i mean crazy with a bullet chest you know what i mean but uh it was um pretty pretty crazy and guys he had way more time that well he he had more time than i had uh, i actually beat him in uh literally a half a second 1.9 seconds and he had a whole three seconds left so so you can just imagine how fast we was actually playing. Uh, this was just crazy. This was a late night, guys. So this was uh, pretty crazy, guys. And um, yeah, I just had to share this with y'all. But again, guys, I hope you actually um, enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you like, share, comment. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. And also, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, guys. Peace.